Well, good afternoon on the West Coast. Good mid-afternoon on the East Coast. Good evening over in Europe. Maybe you're one of the few that's attending the Economic Summit over in Switzerland. And good morning, Asia. Thank you for joining us for what is a traditional SMB Nation weekly webinar. And uh, before we get into that, I want to do a little bit of a little bit of housekeeping, and that is to use the questions feature on your control panel to ask your questions. Uh, we will have a recording of this webinar available after the webinar. You'll receive the link in the thank you notification. And uh, next week on Friday, so Tech Talk, our ongoing winter quarter academic series is Friday next week, not Wednesday, uh, because the speaker uh, well in advance had, had a scheduling uh, matter. And so it's Friday the 2nd of February at noon uh, for HIPAA. So we're going to have a conversation about HIPAA technologies. And then finally, one other cool thing is if you are in the Pacific Northwest, hit me offline, um, Twitter at Harry Brailsford or LinkedIn or Facebook. You guys know how to reach me. But if, if you would like to go to a book signing at the Tower Club in Bellevue, Melanie Goss, the Microsoft princess, has teamed up with a couple of best-selling entrepreneurs, and they're having a book signing next Tuesday, the 30th, next Tuesday, the 30th at noon in Bellevue, Washington um, at the Tower Club. So at a minimum, it's a free lunch. Let me know if you're in the area and you'd like to go hit that up. With that said, let's jump into it. So I view today as a business marries technology conversation, a workflow conversation. We're going to pick up on that theme in a couple of slides. But without further ado, Stev from Intuit, thanks for joining us, my friend. We we haven't heard from Intuit as much as we'd like to the past couple of years at SMB Nation. So it's a obviously familiar name, but welcome back to the community, my friend. Hey, thank you. No, I really appreciate it. And we are going to talk pretty much about that. Like we all, everybody knows who we are, QuickBooks, Intuit, but where are we in terms of like this space and you know what you and folks in your community do so no, we'll, we'll absolutely spend some time talking about that I'm, I'm actually very pleased to be here uh hello everybody thank you harry for for the lead-in and for the greeting my name is Steve rubio uh with intuit the makers of quickbooks my official title is a mouthful uh cloud var hosting and distribution manager not that any of you are supposed to know what that means there are no tests at the end but one of the things i do is i manage the relationship for our quickbooks online product and how it is available from the Ingram Micro platform. Now, again, we're, we're not going to get super technical about stuff, and I'll explain why that's important into a QuickBooks and Ingram Micro and how that plays into uh, into the theme, as Harry had mentioned, business and technology and how those things work together. So it's not a long presentation, folks. We're not going to slide bomb you. Uh, we're going to go over some, some, uh, some data points, and it's going to be a conversation. So I'm looking for some engagement. Don't be bashful about the questions. And uh, you folks will have the ability to reach out to me directly after this if there are things that we need to take offline. Happy to have those conversations. Super. All righty. So what we'll cover, what exactly is QuickBooks Online? Most of you may know. We'll spend a moment on that. How it compares to other QuickBooks offerings? Uh, we kind of get asked that a little bit. So obviously, we, uh, we want to acknowledge that and spend a moment on that as well. Who is the typical or ideal customer? Uh, so basically the end user, you know, your, end, your potential end user who would be uh, best served by uh, the specific product. How to identify those opportunities? Your advantage as an Ingram Micro VAR, now what I mean by that is as a, a reseller, MSP, VAR, however it is you turn yourself uh, with the Ingram Micro relationship, we'll, we'll kind of show you why that's going to be an advantage for you. And obviously any questions that you may have. All right. As promised, what exactly is QuickBooks Online? So it is, it, it's our standard bread and butter SMB focused finance business accounting management solution available in the cloud. So forever, uh, QuickBooks was preeminent in the on-prem or, or more, more commonly known as the desktop space. We've been offering, you know, software out of boxes for, for decades. Uh, QBO is our foray into getting up into the cloud. Uh, anytime, anywhere access. 
it is also designed to be viewed not only you know via the traditional laptop desktop, but it is also customized for a mobile device experience. So whether you're on LTE, Wi-Fi, what have you, uh, it is uh, viewed very well and works very nicely on mobile devices because most of the world uh, is running their stuff in the cloud. And obviously when that is where your products live, where your infrastructure lives, it's cool to have it in the palm of your hand. So this product was designed for that. Uh, again, it, we're, we're many decades old. We started uh, as Quicken uh, in a, a dining table in, uh, in Silicon Valley, and here we are, a, a SMB-focused product maker. QBO is into its newest and fastest-growing product in the QuickBooks family, so two-plus million users as of fiscal year 17, and our fiscal year runs through the end of July. So obviously, we've had more users come on board, many more users since the end of of our fiscal year since uh, July 31st, August 1st. Uh, but those were the latest numbers, so I felt compared to, to share them with you. Evolution of the modern SMB owner and their support system, how it pertains to tech, finance, et cetera. And, 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 and Harry, this is the part that I wanted to, to kind of tie this together with, with the theme, the marriage of, of business and technology. So it's kind of mirrored our evolution as well uh, as a company, okay? So going back to the statement where we started you know, on desktops, on computers, software out of a box. That's kind of that's kind of where we began because that's where you know small businesses live, mom and pop stores, generally retail businesses. And then as time evolved, you know, uh, folks who were service-based businesses, HVAC, plumbing, consultants, the like, they started to become more modern, air quotes, more modernized, more more hip. Maybe they started tracking things in spreadsheets in the 80s and that type of thing. And we've always viewed ourselves as a company that did two things. We always listened to our customers. We wanted to be where they were going. But at the same time, we've always, view, always viewed ourselves as a disruptor, not to the end user, but obviously to the competition. So what are we doing that nobody else is doing? And this whole QuickBooks online product that we have is, is an example of that. And it's kind of the, the old saying is it's like trying to turn the Titanic. How do you teach an old dog new tricks? We're definitely an old dog, but as the world evolves, the need to leverage technology to manage uh, an SMB's, basically their numbers, you know, however it is you want to term it, uh, finances, accounting, and so on, that has not gone away. It's evolved into, well, now can I just do it in, in the palm of my hand? And I think that's, that's what it was you were, you were trying to get across with, with your theme, the, the intersection of, uh, of technology and business. Yep. Yep. So, so if you don't mind, I'll add some some of my version of the truth. <laughs> oh sure, <laughs> yeah, please do. Okay. Uh, so you know, I was just thinking about this the other day. Um, that that uh, in 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 stick with me, guys. But but in high school, I my high school job was a bike courier for a law firm, and and that's back when they had bike couriers. And, and, you know, there, there were fax machines and so on. And, and that's what I did in the afternoons. And that's why a lot of people on this call know that I, I'm still a fairly avid cyclist. It all kind of comes from that era, and I just never quit, quit riding. And, but at that law firm, so this law firm was the uh, bond council, like is in Wall Street bonds, not jail bonds. They, they were the bond council for the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. So that, that was real money, some of the uh, issues that they, that they issued with investment banks. And the head of the law firm uh, told me, you know, the, 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 you know the, the old guy, and I was the young man, you know, the, the, the high school kid. And he said, man, if, if you can marry um, technology and business, you know, you're going to do very well in your career. And, and, and I kind of thought, because, you know, you're looking across the room and I mean, this was just coming out of the IBM Selectric era, not to age myself, but heading into the word processing era. And, 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 and that stuck with me. And, and then, so Steph, here's the funny thing is that, you know, years later, he was right. We have come full circle. <laughs> You know, we we all we all ran off and did cl time sharing and client server and 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 all that, and then now we pivoted to cloud, and then now the purpose of a lot of technology is in fact business related. Um, a premium is being placed on MSPs who are bilingual, 
and have a dual skill set and can speak both geek and speak business um, be, be, because it takes both, you know, and, and all the time honoring the fact we're technical professionals, right? We're still in our own mind, we're still surgeons. Um, and, and, and we love to be in the emergency room and, and that's where we get our high, but we're also running the hospital. We're running the medical clinic. It's like we're the hospital administrator. And, and, and I guess I'll end, I, I could go on and on and on, but, but I, I, I guess I'll end on the fact that you know, you guys already inherently already have the skill set to marry technology and business because you're a technologist and you, in fact, have started, owned and operated your own business. And you're probably not playing that card as well as you should. You, you, you know, you need to give yourself more credit. You, you know, yeah, you have an MBA in life. And that's where I see the new MSP program for QuickBooks Online dovetailing is another arrow in the quiver uh final final point is is that every day i mean yesterday i was in two conversations one with a security vendor and the other with microsoft itself about this very topic about with the pivot to cloud and the changing uh value chain and economics of being an it professional you have got to get out of the server room and walk down the hallway and strike up a relationship with accounting, HR, and in particular marketing, <laughs> where a, a lot of IT spend is shifted. So, Stav, I'm going to go back on mute because you know me. My, we've known each other a brief period of time, but I think you already know. I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate that. No, that, that that's that's great perspective. And in one form or another, and, and not without the, I mean, not the specific example, but these are things that I've shared um, with resellers myself. I, my my background before coming into this role is I spent the last five plus years managing directly a territory of intuit resellers. You know, w within our own business, and it's not unlike a lot of the conversations we had. I'll add to that before go you know clicking to the next slide that one of the other things that I've always impressed upon the, the folks that I had relationships with, my resellers, and, and again, I would, not that anybody asked, but this would be the unsolicited advice, is technology for as smart and fast and agile and savvy as we all seem to be nowadays, we, we can't always take for granted that the, the, the end user, the SMB owners, are on the same level with this. A lot of them use cloud stuff, they don't even know it. Almost all of them play around on Facebook and watch Netflix and do all these other things, but they don't equate that with what exactly does that mean? So the ability to like understand all the things that that you folks do understand, all the all your expertise and all your technology, how you disseminate that into digestible dialect, you know, what makes sense to the customer, I think is maybe that's a little salesy, but I think is really the power of what it is that folks in this space do. Like you can tie all this together for them, but then also your customer understands at their level what it is what it is that you did and what your value is to them so absolutely use that as, as your differentiator all right so what i cooked up here and again folks this will be all all available here to, to everybody either as as requested or, or harry i believe you and your team disseminate this out to all attendees which is cool um hey, hey, so hey basically step one Stev, if you don't yeah. mind, just w with this slide, I, I, I want to provide just a little more context. And we had uh, Stephen ask a question. Um, is is oh, this sure. about – Stephen has asked, is this about QuickBooks or the MSP practice? Fair question. Um, it, uh, I, I, you know, pr feedback's the, br the, the breakfast of champions. So thank you for, for posting that up, <laughs> Stephen. And and I would offer both, and 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 maybe Steve, you can help me connect the dots. But what you're calling a cloud var in the upper right, mm -hmm. page one, mm -hmm. is loosely translated. That's MSP. We're we're, we're talking sure. to the same partner audience, right? Right. Absolutely. Please. Absolutely. No. I, <laughs> no. And I, and I apologize. And that and that is a terminology thing. I mean, you know, we we call something tomato. Something calls it tomato. Somebody else might call it a banana. Right. But you are correct. We're all talking about the same thing. So I apologize for the terminology there. Thank you. Okay, no, thank you for, for calling that out. And again, if, if we do get any, you know, questions like that along the way, Harry, please feel free to free to stop me. I do like the uh, do like the interaction. Well done. So thank you. So uh, we show this stuff because we do get asked a lot of these questions. And again, I'm not going to sit here and go through every little detail of this thing. Just know that it will be available to you folks here at the end. 
Um, we're not going to spend a ton of time on it. Again, it's kind of an eye chart. It's not a test. But the bottom line is, this is why we as a company are coming out and talking to the community that we are now, is this pricing piece of it. So QuickBooks has long been a target for the MSP market, but it's always been kind of an obstacle because the way that we went to market was always very direct. We get compared to Dell quite a bit. Like, you know, Dell has a reseller program. You can resell their stuff. You can do all this, all these things with them, but the customer can also come direct to Dell as well. So the question always was, well, what's the value? You know, what's the MSP play? Why would we do that? So it's not that necessarily our QuickBooks online product is necessarily a new thing in the world. We've had it for the better part of a decade. But what is new about it is the way it's available to, to you folks, the MSP crowd uh, from, uh, from Ingram Micro. They have the technology to help us build a wholesale model of this product. Uh, everybody's concerned about this. I'll be very upfront. You have the potential to make 25% margin on the thing. However it is you take that to market again is entirely up to you. But now you have the ability as a solution provider to include a business financial or accounting solution. However it is you want to bundle it. We actually like to call it business efficiency because it does a lot of things. You now have the ability to add that to, to your portfolio, increasing your value and your stickiness with that customer. So again, I'm not going to belabor every point on this sheet, but uh, it will be available uh, at request at the end of, uh, end of the session. And again, just to outline the fact that you know the, the, the prices that the rest of the world would pay and what's available to you as, again, there's that terminology, Harry, the VAR, value added reseller, or MSP, it all means the same thing. Uh, the pricing is in perpetuity, okay? So that margin will always be there for you. That little screenshot there at the bottom is, uh, you know, oftentimes we will as a company run promos, but those are always short term and the pricing available to uh, to the MSP community via, via Ingram Micro would be in perpetuity. Hey, hey, Stav, uh, before, yeah. I'll tell you what, before we do that poll question, Chinny, hold, hold, hold the hold the fort. <laughs> <laughs> She's over in the radio room about about to fire up that poll question. But uh, Stephen, Stephen Mailer has uh, offered uh, another comment, um, and, and it love it. You know, thank you, Stephen, for being uh, participative. It, it, it's a little bit longer statement, and I actually agree with Stephen on this. And I'm going to add my own comments to it. I'll read the question. It, it goes, <clears throat> "Okay, yeah. I know about the QBO offering. I have lots of QB on-site clients. Many have tried the online version." and state that there are a lot of features and options that are not available in the online version as the current local version. Can you address that? And, and, and Stav, I want to compound that um, in a kind way. But, you know, I, I, to, I, I'm an entrepreneur, and Jenny and I, J Jenny is, takes the lead on accounting, but I occasionally step in as is needed. And so I have used both the QuickBooks on-prem and the QuickBooks online. And I understand that question. There are feature set differences, functionality differences. Now, now, now that said, it hasn't impacted myself, Harry. Jenny would feel that impact more than me. We have used both. We went to the online version because uh, a couple of reasons, but you know, J J Jenny moved to a new location. Uh, I'm still on Bainbridge Island and the cloud version lets us work much easier simultaneously. And, you know, basically Stev, my job is to hunt. And so I bill clients <laughs> and, and it meets my needs. I'm the hunter and it meets my needs. But go, going back to the gentleman's comment, it's a fair question about feature set and functionality differences. You want to hit that one head on? Yeah, no, totally. And, and to your point, there's not one bit of that that I disagree with. So 30 seconds background, I'm in my 13th year here at Intuit, and I spent the first, I think probably three or four years uh, frontline taking uh, inbound phone calls from customers who were the classic SMB customers. And we would talk to them, and oftentimes they already had it, but we would usually offer our on-prem desktop solution uh, to meet their needs. Now, within that catalog of products, and if anybody has familiarity with our, with our catalog, and most do, but I won't assume everybody does, we have a bread and butter product called the Pro, QuickBooks Desktop Pro. And it's a $300 software program, and it's 
probably going to fit the needs of four out of five typical SMB customers. There are products in the catalog above the Desktop Pro, things like the Premier and, and then our, our big dog is called the Enterprise. Those products do get a lot deeper into the accounting side of things. I myself am not accountant minded, which might sound funny for somebody who's worked at, into a QuickBooks for 13 or so years. That's not my core competency, but I know enough about the product and how it, you know, what it does for that end user to understand its value. So directly answering the question, if you're getting that feedback from customers that say, boy, I'd really like to use that QBO thing, but it's not doing X, Y, Z in terms of functionality, we're not going to go out of our way to like change their mind. But what we would do is set the expectation. If we are dealing with customers who would be suited or who are even currently using our QuickBooks Desktop Pro, the QBO, the QuickBooks Online, specifically the Plus version of it, is going to be on par with the functionality. If the end user needs to have the ability to go deeper, like on the accounting side of things, and ju just to name a few, forecast and analysis on budgets, and undoing any reconciliation and not just the last one. So again, this is really ticky-tacky accounting stuff. Like if those are the types of things that we're trying to solve for the end user, then I, I would completely agree. We probably don't want to be on this online version. But for the core SMB customers, tracking money in, money out, uh, doing some invoicing, tying to banking, those types of things, this would be an appropriate product for that. Okay, and Stav, uh, we, we do have other questions. We'll get to those in a minute, yeah. but I want to add just just one more one more thing that uh, I got a private message from Ginny. She got a first time this year, she got out her two by four and, and wrapped my knuckles because she goes <laughs> on to say she loves QuickBooks Online. Ginny, my humble apologies if I implied that you, you don't like QuickBooks Online. Forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> um, with that said, let's do the poll question. David and uh, Stephen will get to your questions in just a moment. They're queuing up. Let's do the poll question, Jenny. Poll question number one, please. Question is, do your customers use QuickBooks today? Yes or no? Uh, while you're completing that, Jeff Shuey uh, made a comment about the book signing in on the 30th. Uh, yes, there's the lunch, but there's also a 5 to 7 p.m. at the University of Village store. Jeff, I'm a, oh, it is the Microsoft store. So uh, UW Village, um, over by the UW, the Microsoft store and that shopping center, 5 to 7, is also the book signing. Ginny, if you would make a side note, let's mail out that brochure with thank you note <laughs> that Melanie provided us. Uh, and uh, let's close the poll. We'll see what the results are. Do your customers use QuickBooks today? And the results are 90% yes, 10% no. So, Stev, I, 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 I guess, I guess the audience made it to the right lecture room. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's and that's a there's a re, not that it was a loaded question, but that is consistent with our findings, and we'll circle back around why why that's actually a, a good thing. To see those results. Thank you. So thank you for taking the time. Now. Why, why don't uh, we continue we can, and we'll, we'll get to these other questions in a moment, but why don't we keep the cadence okay. with some content? Yeah, no, not a problem. And we're guys, we're about halfway done. Again, we're not going to slide bomb you. So again, kind of piggybacking on that, how the product compares, how the online compares to other QuickBooks offerings. And again, I'm, I'm not going to belabor this because I think we just talked about it here a little bit uh, with the interaction there, but just the high points. The QuickBooks Online is a subscription based product. Uh, it is not an on-prem thing that needs to be upgraded every couple of years where you're moving the data file over and, and all of these things change with it. Uh, there are no data file size constraints because it is uh, subscription-based. There is a support entitlement to it, and this is key. We've had a lot of folks uh, in the MSP space tell us that's been a big plus for them because they don't have to dedicate resources and bandwidth and time and energy to becoming a quote unquote QuickBooks expert in order to support it, Intuit still owns the support entitlement to that. And again, to re, uh, reiterate, it is natively available on internet connected mobile devices, not just uh, laptops uh, and desktops. And of course, because it is now 
a monthly wholesale model that fits in nicely with how uh, the industry creates their portfolio offerings. You can bundle it with the other things that you do like to sell, like your office, and your your security, and your collaboration, and, and so on and so forth. So it, it pairs nicely with that via this model. All right. How, how about we take David's question? We'll, we'll we'll do a slide. We'll do a question. We'll do a little yeah. of this, a little of that. Please. So David Anderson out of uh, – David, I think you relocated from Mercer Island down to San Diego uh, a few years back. You're missing out on a wet, drippy winter day up here. Um, he says, in addition to the lack of features in QB Online, the other problem uh, is that it costs more – uh, paying on a monthly basis for three years than if I just buy the desktop version from the store and use it for three years. Uh, Steph? Yeah, no, that's fair. So that it's possible to do so. But then also remember, because the QBO product is not static, it's not like a perpetual license. So as new features are made available, the, ent the support entitlement that comes with it those things are automatically pushed to active subscribers, as it were. So if you wanted to be very apples to apples, if we looked at, let's say, again, the, the desktop equivalent, the QuickBooks Pro carries a retail price of uh, 299 And again, being you know very honest about this, you're probably going to find it for less, depending if, on, if it's on sale or, or wherever it is you happen to get it. So we'll, we'll meet you halfway. And let's say you can spend about $200 on it, give or take. Uh, and then to add an equivalent support entitlement from into it is about a $250 investment on top of that. So just apples to apples, the support entitlement, it's probably going to be close to breaking even, but then also at the same time, new features and, and uh, capabilities will be pushed to the product for active subscriptions. Fair enough. So again, to, 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 yeah, to, to your point, to call that out, I mean, yeah, the, the, the folks who make those decisions absolutely do that math. So that is, that is well vetted before they take it to market, but that's a good call out. Uh, typical customers, honestly, the typical customer isn't necessarily going to be anybody who's that much different from like the desktop customer, but for some of the things that we just talked about, uh, the remote uh, access to data, the need to grant the access to other trusted partners like the accountant. Harry, you kind of talked about that a little bit, you know, how, mm -hmm. how you and Jenny can, can collaborate in it, you know, mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. distance. So, yep, so thank yep, you yep. For, for setting that up for me. Uh, you don't want, uh, again, we just talked about this. You don't want to worry about upgrading or being on the latest version. It's automatically pushed. You don't want to operate without access to the help and support services. Again, the great questions. We're kind of covering this stuff and, and, and accelerating the slides, so I appreciate that. And this one might be kind of like a blanket statement, but really any new business, so you know, a new the world business that's got to track the money in, money out, uh, would be a key audience here. And again, we've also noticed uh, nonprofit organizations, service-based associations, those folks tend to consume uh, the QBO at a very high rate. And Harry, if questions are coming in, feel free to stop me at any point. I mean, we, well, we don't yeah, have... let's, let's, now let's do another uh, yeah. Stephen Mailer uh, comments. Um, my experience has been that once they have used on -prim, the on-prem version, they will mm -hmm. not switch to the QBO version. So, you know, good observation. Um, Steph, you see in that? Uh, we do. We see some of it. And I feel like, and, and Stephen, I feel like we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and open up an invitation to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation because I feel like there's a lot more we could delve into there. But again, to, to address it for everybody who can hear the sound of my voice, uh, yeah, we do see a bit of that. But at the same time, we also do see our own desktop numbers decline year over year, which isn't necessarily alarming. It's not a bad thing in our eyes because our strategy is to put as many people in the cloud as possible because it's going to allow us to go global. That's really the longer term play. Okay. So there are going to be a subset of folks who once they're, you know, desktop today, desktop forever, but we do see people adopting it at a higher rate year over year over year. So there is some truth to that, but the truth does change over time. We do see people adopting at a higher rate year over year. It's a good question. Okay, fair enough. The deck is clear for a moment. Please continue. Yeah, sure. All right. So your advantage as and again, there's that there's that terminology thing again. So so good to know. So let's just wipe that out and say your advantage as an MSP, if you have an Ingram Micro relationship, Ingram Micro is the only place where you can leverage this model, wholesale monthly model, 
outside of our intro pro advisor program, which does require paid annual membership and renewals. And we left off there. It does require training and certification. Okay. So if those are things you wanted to get into from an accounting perspective, we have a program for that. I feel like that's probably not going to be a common theme within this community, which is why we have this product available now on a wholesale basis, specifically for resellers. Um, the all-in-one solution to the customer. So we, we understand that the power of the MSP, and we talked about this a little bit at the top, is the ability to bundle, offer solutions, customize you know, how you get in front of your customers, creating that custom solution package. You now have the ability to do that because our model mirrors the model of other applications that are being used uh, out there in the free market. And of course, you can sell it one-on-one -on -one if you wanted to, but the power is in the packaging. Um, a customized account provisioning experience on the marketplace. So it, it's very MSP friendly. You know, you capture the customer's info, give it to us, we send the account. It's a very slick. And again, you do not have to be an expert. So we're not going to ask people to train and certify and devote bandwidth to support and all of this crazy stuff. We do own the support and service entitlement uh, beyond the provisioning of the account. It's a big deal. Hey, and Stav, I am getting a meter that's showing on my site out here on the south end of the island, a little bit of shaky internet connectivity for, for me. If, if I drop, mm -hmm. I'll call back in on my mobile phone, but I I just yep. want you to know I, I didn't hang up on you. <laughs> okay, good. I hear you. All right. Hey, speaking of which, we have a second poll question, folks. Uh, do you recommend your clients move completely off the cloud? Uh, we have a yes, no. And then um, Jeff Shuey has kindly sent me over on screen number two. Jeff has sent a flyer for the evening book signing as well. Uh, so we have day and night. Now, Jeff, a question for you, my friend. If I go to the midday, I get free lunch. If I go to the evening, do I get a free dinner? Because, hey, look, I'm an entrepreneur, man. This We're, we're saving some money here. Um, with that said, Jenny, go ahead and close uh, close out the uh, close out the poll. <laughs> and the results, the the question was, do you recommend your clients move completely to the cloud? Thirty six percent yes, sixty four percent no. Uh, Steph, offer your analysis, and then I'm going to offer an opinion. Sixty four percent. Yeah, so uh, this is going to be purely anecdotal, and I might be shooting from the hip a little bit here, but I think this kind of goes along with the comment we heard earlier about once somebody's you know, specific to our product, once somebody's on the desktop, they tend to stay there. I feel like a lot of that has to do, change can be uncomfortable, not that it's not necessary sometimes, but I feel like it's if we can just run something as long as it absolutely can run and we don't have to stop the you know the machinations of business and we don't have to stop the train to make a change uh the longer we can do that the better that that's what it feels like to me i might be wrong and i would i would love context on that but that's what that's what it feels like to me yeah yeah i mean i you know i don't know that i have uh, a new paradigm so i could go get a phd or anything but <clears throat> um i i i'll tell you about a meeting i had yesterday and I prefer not to kind of name the individual. It's a, it's a lady who was on the original small business server team in 1999 and still there at Microsoft. I mean, good Lord. And uh, we, 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 we got together and, and the conversation kind of amounted to, is there, and it's a, it's a conversation I have once a year, but is there a role uh, for a non-prem small business server type solution in this day and age, or is it um, 365, is it cloud? And I said, well, you know, it's, I, I mean, you, you know, you can kind of lay out the technical arguments. And 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 when we had QuickBooks uh, on-prem, we, we had on-prem, you know, infrastructure and functionality, and I, I, I get that. And so, you know, Steph, for example, you, you you could argue maybe in a compliance situation, you know, there might be a need for on-prem um, infrastructure. And and, yeah. and 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 then I said, but you know, putting all that aside, it's it's also quite frankly, it's it's a little bit of a religious war in our communication. I mean, there are just people. Apparently, there's 64% of the people on this call today. <laughs> who do not believe you should move completely. And that's a key point, completely, to the right. cloud. But, Steve, you, you know what I'm saying? There's there's two components. There's sort of technical, 
and then there's religion. <laughs> yeah, that's completely valid. No, that uh, that actually makes a ton of sense to me. All right. Um, hey, let's do a question. They're they're starting to pile up here. Sure. What's happening? Uh, ta, 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 Sheldon. <clears throat> Sheldon Pinner asks, uh, the one thing I have noticed that QVO does not offer is the ability to data share with other software, such as contacts with a uh, CRM. So that's kind of almost like an API question. That is interesting to me. What's the scoop? Yeah, so good. So it, it, very good call out. The folks who make those decisions, i.e. engineers, business unit, and all that, have kind of gotten – the word that we should look at that and i'm going to offer everybody here on the call not that this is a titanic secret but if you go to apps.com just like it sounds apps.com okay that is a great place to spend some time looking for applications that have some level of interface with our qbo so i i mean i can't tell you intelligently off the top of my head what kind of crm you're going to find there but what we have learned is customers and users, I should say, are creating their own ecosystems of solutions based on what it is that they need to do. So we, we as a product might not have direct integration with this app or that app, but that doesn't mean customers aren't using them because they found something in between as a conduit. Now, is that the, is slick is like, you know, dyed in the wool built in integration? No, it's not. But if customers are doing this, then they are showing those of us who create these, the vendor manufacturers who create these offerings that there's power in looking at that. So there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that I'm not privy to. They don't, they don't invite me to those meetings and rightfully so. But uh, I would say spend some time on that apps.com and see if there isn't a solution there that kind of rings the bell for you. And again, just be on CRM. I mean, anything else. Yeah, and hey, let me let me add. I just got a uh, on another screen a, a Facebook message from uh, Thomas Beck. So Thomas Beck works for Slinger. Slinger's a SMB Nation uh, uh, stakeholder, uh, fan, and, and 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 member, and so on. Um, mm -hmm. They are a DevOps shop, and they are in the business of API development and integration. For example, one of their primary platforms is Slack. Is is sort of that foundation and then okay. building everything on top of slack so thomas you go on to say yes yeah, slinger can integrate uh, quickbooks online with anything uh, psa tools or crm folks if you want to check that out and uh you could reach thomas via slinger s-l-i-n-g-r dot, uh, dot io so it's like slinger without the e dot io uh thanks thomas that that was a value add let's see what else other hot questions we have here clive start coming to us live tomorrow morning from new zealand good morning clive says uh is this included via ingram micro in new zealand good question today as we live and breathe and interface with each other this is a u.s market specific offering but the wheels are turning in order for us to be able to offer this global and other markets so though not today but stay tuned Okay, and we have uh, Sheldon uh, back at us with, uh, what if I already have a QBO account? Can I move it to the VAR program? Really good question. Yeah, the, the terrific question. So air quotes move. What you can do is you can cease that subscription and then start a new one. The question is, cool, what about all that data that's in there? Yeah. And that, <laughs> right? Uh, so it, it, it's not like on-prem where you can just do a backup and, you know, flash drive it or cloud drive it and you know, stick it somewhere else. There, There is some work that would need to be done there or we'll probably take the involvement of our QBO support team. So I guess it's a two-part answer. I mean, yeah, you could stop what you're doing and start a new wholesale one, but there's probably going to be a little bit of heavy lifting in, in uh, trying to deal with that data, which is, in my mind, probably more valuable than the dollars and cents anyway. All righty, Scott Abbott's asked. Stephen, I'll get to your other question. I, I see Stephen Mailer's asked uh, another one, but I'll kind of circle back okay. to you. Uh, Scott Ab Ab Abbott's has asked, uh, of 90% using QuickBooks, how many are QB online? So what's, what's your product mix, if you're able to disclose that? Oh, oh was, that, was that for me, Harry? Yeah, yeah, that's for you. So, so online oh, versus on-prem. Yeah, so that's... 
you almost have to pick a, a time frame to look at that. So, so remembering that we do have a lot of legacy customers and we do have a lot of folks that like to hang on to their desktop product beyond the three year supported life cycle. So if we were to go look at active, you know, desktop users today, I don't know that we could get a responsible number. I can tell you it's definitely going to be greater than our active QBO subscription number. Two plus million, we're probably two and a half, two and three quarter million at this point. Uh, I feel like the desktop product is going to be more because there are so many more. I mean, A, it's been around longer, right? And B, yeah. we have... We have a very simple version. We have the Pro, we have the Premier, and then we have the Enterprise and all the industry versions that go into that, which is going to be like the natural evolution. When you have something for decades, you're going to have more options of it. So I have no problem telling you I feel like there's more desktop folks out there than, than the online folks, just in terms of like what's active in terms of software. I don't have my finger on the pulse of exactly what that number is. I mean, I could probably get it if it's super important data i don't mind running that down for you but i could also tell you because it is just tracking like installed software that doesn't give us any insight onto the engagement piece of it which is very important like we can tell from active qbo subscriptions who's actually using right because we can get the analytics because it's you know it, it's running through through our uh through our servers on the desktop product all we can see if it was ever installed and registered we don't know what the level engagement of it is today. I mean, they could just leave it alone and not ever touch it, or maybe they abandoned it. We would honestly never know. So um, very good question. I don't have the, the answers at my fingertips. All right. Well, let's continue. We, we do have several questions, but let's, let's get back to content, and then we'll come back sure. to questions. Well, the, and the good news is I, I do like to present these decks with enough time to engage directly. So just some parting thoughts. And then we can get right back to the questions here, just some of the things that I've learned. And again, my background, I've not spent my entire Intuit career focused on the QBO. I've been uh, uh, retail solutions focused most of my time at Intuit. So a lot of this is a learning to me. Um, the, the QBO is a good solution for other than accounting functionality. So even if we're dealing with, with a, uh, an SMB who doesn't necessarily need to track accounting, which would boggle my mind, but we hear it sometimes, invoicing, banking, remote access for users, these are, these are other things that can be solved in the QBO. It's a very straightforward offering, and I think we've kind of covered this, like maybe organically in some of the other things we've talked about through the course of the call. Um, our numbers tell us that the QBO users are on the essentials, the middle version, but the folks that we've talked to at Ingram Micro and some of their resellers, they believe the Plus will be the best seller. Don't tell me why, that's what they told me, so I figured I would share it. Um, again, the, the active subscribers are entitled to the ongoing enhancements and upgrades and support services directly from Intuit. Again, these are things that uh, would be, especially for the support, would be an add-on to the desktop product. Um, I was going to spend a little bit of time talking about, um, you know, my experiences dealing with MSPs of varying size at Ingram Micro Events, but I, I kind of want to make sure we use any available time and interact with you folks who are on the call. So I'm kind of, I'm going to blast through that one. And again, we touched on this a little bit. We see a lot of organic cross-pollination with the Microsoft and the Dropbox and the DocuSign, um, the Symantex, the Nortons, uh, SMBs who are using this stuff as provided by an MSP. Uh, and again, I think the, bowl, the, the poll answers kind of bear that out. QuickBooks is usually a part of that anyway. So we do see a lot of that cross-pollination organically. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll hit Q&A. No, Thank you. Now, this was just, just some resources here. Um, Harry, I believe you shared this info out with, with attendees and registrants afterwards. Yep, Folks, yep, please yep. take note. Thank you. Please take note of my email. That is my direct phone number. It doesn't go to a switchboard. Happy to engage directly if, uh, if we want to have further conversations to learn more or, or, or what have you. Um, very open about how to reach me. And I want to spend the rest of this time that we have together, uh, knock it down questions if, uh, if we're starting to get some in there, Harry. Yeah, yeah, we got a couple more and then, you know, success breeds success as they say. So folks, if you have any more questions, let's queue them up. I think I am, let me expand the dashboard so I can keep them straight. This dashboard is not, not the best way to line up the questions, but but it's okay. Um, so Stephen Mailer asks, 
can a client upload their current file to the cloud, use it, and if they don't like the cloud version, can they export their data and go back down to the pro version uh, with hiring Harry to make it work? Well, no, you can't hire Harry to make it work. <laughs> I, I, I was cool with that question about up and down, but... Um, <laughs> So, but I, the, the 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 base question is: you, you pile it online, you don't like it. Can is it pretty simple to bring your data down? So, two part answer: there is direct functionality within the QBO, the QuickBooks Online account, to migrate a desktop data file. That's built in. It's, it's point click. There are a handful of little things that wouldn't come over, like if you customize the way your forms and invoices look in desktop. That's not going to carry over to QBO just because that, that framing is different. You, you would have to recreate those templates. But in terms of like the data, like the important stuff, yeah, that, that is transferable up to the QBO. The second half of the question, if they don't like it, can I go back? Well, yes and no. Yes, you can obviously go back. To get a QBO file reformatted back down into the QBW is a very manual and very hands-on process. So the recommendation, and even our direct sales teams will tell a customer this, uh, look, do a backup of your data and then pull up, the, take that backup or even the original just so you have a backup. The point is have two data files. Give it a shot. If you, if it's not what you want to do, if you're not feeling it, if that's not making you happy, then at least you have that other untouched data file to resort back to. So let me sum it all up. It's easy to go, I guess, quote unquote, upstream. It is not so easy to go downstream. So yes, up to the cloud, automated, coming back, kind of some heavy lifting. Okay, uh, comment from uh, Bob uh, Nitrio, uh, just a, a general comment. Uh, and Bob, by the way, thank you for being a guest on yesterday's analytics webinar. So shout out to Bob Nitrio for helping me out, uh, basically a brother from another mother on uh, the topic <laughs> yesterday. Um, but he, uh, he he observes, and this is a good point, 100% um, cloud dependency is often ruled out by regulatory requirements that cannot be met by existing cloud offerings. We love cloud solutions, but only uh, where they are the best solution for our clients. And and I would concur, you know, I, I, I felt this, I've lived in Seattle a long, long time, and I'm a friend of the family from Microsoft, but... You know, everybody's got a family, if if you know what I mean, right? Thanksgiving dinners can get a little tense. And um, I have always felt my, Microsoft has to earn your business. Um, I would offer Intuit has to earn your business. The cloud has to earn your business, right? There's there's no sacred cows or carte blanche <laughs> thing going on here, right? <laughs> Totally, and I love that response because that reinforces a lot of what I would tell my Intuit reseller partners when I manage that you know that territory here for the last five or so years. That that's why folks are coming to you. That's why end users, these these SMB folks, are coming to you for that advice, that consultancy, and honestly, folks need to be told what to do a lot of the times when they're dealing with something that they know. They have to pay attention to technology accounting. That's why consulting is a thing. They're looking for that guidance. And I would be the first to align even on behalf of a vendor manufacturer. I mean, yeah, we'd love everybody to use our product. Totally. What we would love even more is everybody was using it and they were using it correctly and it was solving all their problems for them. So we're not trying to slam uh, a square peg into a round hole. I, I, I love that feedback. Uh, Stephen Mailer says he fat-fingered on his original question. He said without hiring Harry. Thank you very much, Stephen. I yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm always up. I'm always up for a side, you know, side action. But <laughs> not 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 sure I'm qualified for that. Uh, Ernst Cook, if you don't mind, I'm going to say that. He uh, is not a fan of downloading back. Um, uh, there's ladies and, and children on the call, so I won't quite use this language, but it amounts to that he's he's not a fan of that. Hey, you know, Steph, fair enough. Um, I mean, I've encountered this with ERP systems. I just encountered it last week with a labor market, which I won't name. 
but uh, it, 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 it's a real phenomenon, cloud versus on-prem and who owns the data and up and down and all around. It's, it's a real issue. <laughs> no, totally. No, I, w- I would completely agree with that. And, and being mindful of the women and the children, I've, I've heard the remarks and had the conversations uh, directly as well. And uh, I get full disclosure, I'm not going to necessarily evangelize um, one one way of doing it versus the other, which is why I love the previous comment so much. It's like, yeah, we want it all to be in the cloud, but in advance of that, you know, job number one is satisfying the customer's requirements. And I, I think that is absolutely uh, the way to operate until one day somebody, hopefully it's us, that would be great, figures out how to be 100% in the cloud and it meets all the requirements, whatever it happens to be. And I know that work is being done, but again, uh, they don't let me in all those meetings, but um, that, that's really that's really the the way to operate. I I absolutely agree with that. Very cool. So, folks, I'm gonna I'm gonna issue last call for questions. We've we've essentially cleared the deck. Jeff Shuey uh, made a couple of comments uh, to me that not only do you get a free handshake at the evening book signing uh, next week um, on the 30th, but there will be refreshments provided at the Microsoft U Village store. So um, probably not uh, tenderloin steak, but <laughs> I'm sure uh, so- soft drinks and so on. So um, looks like we may have fulfilled uh, the appetite of the audience with respect to the questions. So, so Steph, give it your best shot. Maybe just if you want to highlight your resources, once again, your phone number and email, and I think everybody can get back to work in a timely fashion. Yeah, no, I appreciate everybody's time. I know time is precious. I mean, it's billable, and you chose to spend it here with us. So, again, I really appreciate it. Phone number, email, all of that is open. Please leverage it. Uh, anybody, open invitation. Happy to carve out some time uh, to sit down and, and, and talk as you see fit. Uh, I'm not bashful. And uh, I'll, I'll always shoot you straight. So, yeah, I, I, I wear the company hat, but at the same time, we want to keep everybody going in the right direction. So, so happy to engage directly. I understood. Hey, David Anderson snuck in a question, uh, uh, a question slash comment. We'll make this the final yeah. word. Is uh, David says I was a member of the Intuit Solution Provider Program. Whatever happened to that program? Oh, it still exists. That's where I spent the last five or so years of my life, and it's still going strong today. So. Um, if that is a conversation that needs to be had, there's my email, there's my phone number. Please hit me up and, and we can pick that up. Super, super. Okay. Well, thanks, Dev. Thanks, audience. Thanks, Jenny in the radio control room. Folks, have a great day. We will see you at the book signing if you're in the Pacific Northwest, and we're going to see you next Friday at noon for HIPAA with MSP Tech Talk. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you.